So now we're going to do the evaluation of the ear. The first part of the evaluation is going to be looking at the external ear itself. We want to be able to look at the pinna of the ear. Uh, we need to be able to inspect it not only from the front but also behind because again this is an area that the patient cannot see and may have some lesions or moles that they have not noticed in the past. So I want to look at it um, in the front, pull the pinna forward so I can make sure I can look behind it for again redness or moles or other lesions. And then again palpate along uh, the upper part of the pinna and the earlobe looking for pain or tenderness. So that's the examination of the external ear. To examine the ear canal and the tympanic membrane, we need to use the otoscope. So this is the otoscope that we have here in the Clinical Skills Center. Uh, it has a portion on the front where the light is that allows us to attach the speculum. This keeps it clean, but also allows us to actually insert it easily into the patient's ear. Make sure you use a new one of these each time you examine a patient. You can use the same speculum from one ear to the other if there's no drainage or significant amount of earwax in one ear. If there is, you'll have to change speculums between ears. In order to put the uh, speculum on, there are some notches on the front of the otoscope that the speculum fits into. So I just slip the speculum in and twist so that it locks into place. And when I pull up on it, it's stable. And when I turn it upside down, it doesn't fall out. So now it's stably there for the patient. The otoscope also has the ability to focus. You'll notice that on the side of this, the otoscope, there is a dial that has a green bar on it. Uh, the green bar, uh, if it's lined up with the green line, is sort of a mid-range uh, magnification. It is about the same level of magnification that you will see on uh, otoscopes that don't have the ability to adjust. I usually start there and make adjustments as needed. In addition, there's a dial at the base of the otoscope that allows us to change the intensity of the light. Under most circumstances for the otoscope exam, I need the higher level of intensity, so I usually just leave the light turned up all the way. However, if you're getting too much reflection, you can turn the light down as needed. The otoscope will heat up with time uh, due to that light bulb that's in it, so make sure that you're not just leaving it down with the light on because it will get warm. The next part is how do I hold the otoscope? Most individuals will hold the otoscope upright, so you want to have a good hold of the base of the otoscope, but also near the head so you have good control as to where it's going. I also recommend that you have your finger pointed out, either your um, index finger or your pinky finger, something that you can rest on the patient's face so that you are in fact anchored to the patient's head. If the patient moves suddenly, if you don't have any anchor on the patient's face, then he'll move and the otoscope will stay in the same location. The tip of the otoscope then hit the inside of the ear canal and cause pain or even bleeding. The ear canal skin is very, very thin and easily friable. And in children specifically, they won't necessarily hold still for you. Most adults are, will nicely stay with you and even if they're startled, not jerk too badly. But younger patients or patients who have some form of disability that doesn't allow them to remain calm, that could be a problem. So make sure that you do some kind of anchor. When you go to actually insert the otoscope into the patient's ear, the ear canal is, and the pinna are not necessarily directly lined up in a straight line. So to be able to line it up nicely so that we can fit the otoscope in and see the eardrum, we want to pull the pinna gently, superiorly, and posteriorly. Uh, again, this is not a large movement. It's a subtle movement in that direction. And that helps line everything up. When I go to insert the otoscope in, you want to make sure that you can see the tip of the speculum actually inserting into the ear canal before you attempt to look through the otoscope. If I attempt to go in like this and put the scope in, I can't see where I'm going. This also gives me the opportunity to shine the light on the external part of the ear canal and see if there's any abnormalities there. Once I've inserted the speculum into the ear canal a small amount, then I put my eye up to the magnifying lens and adjust the angle of the otoscope until I can see the tympanic membrane and remove the speculum. Once you've done a good inspection of the tympanic membrane, you're done. If you're not seeing the full membrane, you need to adjust the otoscope until you see all of the landmarks necessary. Please refer to the images in your textbook for all the appropriate landmarks and how they look for the otoscope exam. So once you've completed the otoscope and examined both ears, make sure you remove the speculum and discard it. And put the otoscope back on its base so that the light turns back off. Or if it doesn't have a base, make sure you switch off the light. 
So now that we've completed that, we want to make sure we also evaluate the patient's hearing. This is a screening evaluation of hearing. It's a very rough screen. If you see any abnormalities in this, more testing will need to be done. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a hearing test to, see, test to see if the patient can hear a subtle sound in both ears. Um, you want to make sure you do this evaluation with the patient's eyes closed because you don't want there to be any visual cues as to where the sound might be coming from. But tell the patient what you're going to do first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub my finger next to your ear um, and I'm going to do it on both sides and you tell me which ear you're hearing it from. Okay. Before you do it, I recommend that you rub your fingers next to your own ear <laughs> and make sure that you're making a noise. If you use lots of lotion or other things and your hands are kind of damp, you may not make the sound if there's not enough friction. So just make sure that you can hear something. All right, so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. All right, and tell me which side you're hearing it on. Right. Right. Left. All right, thank you. You can open your eyes. I generally do it on one side twice. I try and do, before I move to the other side, some kind of pattern that may not be predictable to the patient. Okay. 